I was just reading something earlier by or listening to a commentator in the States that was saying that with the advent of COVID-19 and what is happening now in America, uh, COVID-19, the precautions, the social distancing, the, the lockdown measures have come to naught. I mean to say people are now going for what they believe in, passionate about what they believe in, and as a result of that, they don't care about COVID-19 or so. The commentator said at, at it's, a, it's a great day in America at the same time where people stand up. I don't know if he was being facetious or what, but people stand up for what they believe in. But he said it would be very terrible if uh, in light of the, the fact that COVID-19 seems to be affecting the BME community disproportionately, it would be terrible if COVID-19 somewhat raises its ugly head again and then there becomes a peak. And I'm talking about in America. In the UK now, it seems as well, based on looking at the, the road and looking at um, people going about their business, one can say people are somewhat uh, wanting to get back to some sense of normality. I don't know if that's that's your view or so but they want to get back to some sense of normality and as a result they're going about their business um pass a, a b and q off the motorway looked at it massive queue of course social distancing applies um properly and, and one can see that uh wherever i went to a while ago <clears throat> social distancing applies at this uh wholesale uh cars are parked <laughs> social distancing right? So it, it applies, it applies, it applies, it applies. So we're just hoping that um, somehow that with what is happening now, we really take stock of social distancing because apparently COVID-19 will be here for a while whereby it might be um, upgraded to COVID-20, COVID-20, if anything, yeah. But my topic today, the brief thinking that I have is a post that I post yesterday whereby it just came to me very strongly whereby persons hijack movements the hijacking of movements hijacking opportunities hijacking demonstrations hijacking um, things for a cause for another cause right and we, we don't know exactly what goes through a person's mind because I said in my post that uh, a bandwagon many people jump on bandwagons bandwagons uh, people are led sometimes like uh, sheep people like sheep I, I recognize as well and it's not a bad thing to say that um, even in the Bible um, Christ says my sheep knows my voice my sheep knows my voice you know and uh, people are led like sheep and people are somewhat moved by emotion and emotion is important. Anger is important. To feel sensitive, to feel weak is important. To feel vulnerable is important. Men don't like to feel vulnerable. <laughs> Men don't like to feel like um, getting caught out or so. So they're tough and they're strong. And people always say, show your human side, show your feminine side. I never like when they say feminine side. It's not a feminine side, it's emotions. And just because someone may cry and weep, I find myself now watching movies sometimes now and uh, she's crying. <laughs> and and my wife would say sometimes to the children, oh, daddy's crying or something like that, you know? Um, and this is of late years, you know, that I find myself of that nature whereby one can reattach himself to, to one's emotion. And, uh, but I try not to let my emotions take away me into another zone. I try not to let anger, if it comes, take away me into another zone. It may come, we may shout and get angry. Uh, nobody will see me angry, <laughs> you know, uh, or peed off. But um, you, it has got to be controlled to a certain point whereby it is channeled into something to create what is it that one wants. Now, it's easy sometimes to say these things when one is out of a particular picture, you know. But I believe over the years, as one trained himself, then somehow it becomes a part of norm where one is able to control themselves. I listen to motivational speakers. 
and I take for motivation because I read the Bible. It says things like, "In your anger, do not sin." Um, you know, when you go to sleep or so, you're angry with your partner, so try to make it up. These are principles of life, and and sometimes it's not to be construed as if say one is shutting one down. But the worst thing is when you jump on a bandwagon, and the driver of the bandwagon is blind. Yeah, that's the worst thing. The worst thing when you go on a bandwagon and there's no clear direction or clarity as, as of purpose then what what manifests from that is anarchy is confusion you know and and many people i know are very sensitive as to how they speak about what what is happening you know you know and and over the years um we have seen from the outside um looking in on america um you know i would say this point blank that we love america i grew up in jamaica loving America you know and um, never seen these sort of things but maybe as Will Smith said it has been happening over the years all that is happening now is the broadcasting the, the filming more of these things which are happening maybe over the years one is protected from these things because you never had that online instant news we never had that online instant news what we're having now is online and it's very instant now, if you remember in the Bible, there's a guy named Stephen. And, and, and it seemed like the Bible has a prophetic edge to it with social media and the world camera and world eyes. Stephen said in the Bible, when Stephen was being beaten or so, it, it was like the whole world, the eyes of the world was upon him. And you wonder, how was that possible? How can the world eyes were upon him when they never had camera and all, all those sort of things? And, um, and it seemed like, the, the Bible speaks about these sort of days. These days are coming. You know, anarchy, men lovers of themselves, and all those wars, rumors of war. These are things that are showing part of the end time. Right? This will not be the last killing of a, a black man. This will not be the last killing of a white man. This is not the last of, of these things. Because as long as there's sin in the heart of man, as long as there is, um, you know, uh, what should I say, envy, jealousy, rife, you know, backbiting, you know, it, we will not get this perfect world. We will not get this perfect world. I, I, and I'm sorry to say this. We, we will have more killing of persons through racism. We'll have more killing of persons by different race and different race, um, you know, based on jealousy, backbiting, rife. Uh, and, and it is something that is inevitable. But the key thing is what we do with what we know how do we channel these energies you know and and last night when i was speaking on my show i i i come from a position whereby i believe very strongly at this time and this is not relating to america this is relating to people this is relating to the black race as well it's relating to my race as i consider myself as a speaker and as a thinker and and as a voice to influence I believe very strongly that we need to wake up and uh, don't be woke. When I hear when I hear the word woke, the only thing I'm thinking of a past tense, woke. I say we need to wake up, wake up and smell the rose and keep awake, keep alive, because one needs to be very strategic in the process. I also flagged up the point that in any battles or in any war, what you will have, you will have different strands of soldiers soldiers who will never see the battlefield whereby they never see a physical enemy because they are in the background strategizing getting coordinates as to where to launch the scud missile you know with the satellite thing in the air roving or so um, they are able to actually take out targets so they are very strategic you have those in the in the war room as Churchill in the war room where what they do, they tend to um, look to see the bigger picture. And then you got those who are on the field. Well, those on the field, while they're on the field, they're not being very chaotic in the fact. They're actually following orders. They're actually meticulously going into places, taking out the enemy. We have seen a lot of this. We see how they take out Saddam, if it is Saddam, as some would say, you know. But we've seen how they did that strategically. And what they did, they meticulously did that. So while you got a president sitting all the way in America, 
you got this, 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 the, the, the seal or those guys going there you got the operation from another place you got the helicopter in the air waiting for them to take them back and then you know sorted it out and bam strategic ways of fighting wars so therefore one has got to consider what is happening now as a war as a battle in a certain way and when you go into a battle you've got to know your enemy when you go into a war you've got to know your enemy because chaotic anarchy and also weakens that will weaken one you know they said that uh what's his name nelson man not nelson mandela uh martin luther king would say the riot is a voice of the unheard but at the same time martin luther king never instigated riots martin luther king um always speak about hate begets hate and it doesn't help it doesn't build so i think if you're going to take and use certain words and certain mannerism or certain thinkings one has got to take everything in the bigger picture now as i said before and i've said it again i will not minimize the hate i'll not minimize the anger the anger by persons but i i believe that one has got to have a cool sense and I was very impressed when I heard the mayor of Atlanta this morning, that's the first thing I woke up to, um, speaking out and saying to persons, you know, of all the places, don't do Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta is where a lot of black businesses are. Atlanta is, is a key place. You don't destroy Atlanta of all the places, you know. And she's saying, go home, go home. You know, and I, and I and I and I had to resonate with her, and and Ti came on after, um, saying the same thing. He, he, he's upset, of course. He's saying this is going on. Killer also came on saying we're going on. But what they're saying is, don't touch Atlanta. And and by virtue of such, what what they're actually saying there, and then, is that you've got to recognize where your enemy is, right? You've got to recognize where your enemies and and how you approach certain things. So, 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 um, what's happening here now? Okay, everybody's having a little party or so like that. Yeah. yeah. What happened? Okay, Is it blocked out there? Huh? I'm gonna go back out. Yeah, yeah, it's not blocked. Okay, yeah. okay, good man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I found this good blockage here. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, no, 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 you can go, you can go, you can go, you can go, you can go. Um, just bear me for a second. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that, yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 so my, my thinking is that, um, one has got to be very strategic at this time. Very strategic. You know? Even, even what I'm going to say now, it is not even something that should be said. But what I'm saying is something which makes sense. I, I, did, I did the Operation Black Vote thing with Simon Woolley a few years ago and Lee Jasper, that whereby they tend to try to encourage black persons to get involved in the political system in the UK. So they trained them up by shadowing MPs, shadowing councillors, shadowing judges, and, and, and as a result of that, the, the bug gets you as to how the workings of politics is, you know? I believe very strongly that getting involved in politics at this time is a part of the solution. It's a part of the parallel plan, right? Yes, of course, one should not, um, one should not condone any police officers at the same time, all states should be at this time weeding out all their bad cops yeah weeding out all their bad cops as much as possible and by weeding out their bad cops what they're doing they are setting the stage as well so there's like a parallel thing going weeding out strategic positioning as well and and something else which which came up as well is that uh white people also need to play a, a, a part of the, the solution by actually, you know, owning up. Just like how um, the mayor of of Atlanta, or the governor of Atlanta, the lady said, 
Call your boys home. She's got a chance. Call them. Where are they? Call them home. Tell them to come home now. Tell them to come home. Therefore, likewise, white persons should be speaking to their children. A lady was saying she's praying that she doesn't wear, she doesn't raise another of that lady who was in the park and calling uh, the police on the Afro-American man who was actually simply telling her what he was telling her. All he was simply telling her is to keep your dog on the leash. <laughs> but she used the word Afro-American man to the police in order to gain and understanding the power that wails psychological but powerful at the same time you know think about Emmett Till that young man there many years ago and when people look back again they say hang on a second they're still using those terms so I'm not I'm not um, distancing myself from some of these realities there's a man I think one of the first black men who was trying to get into a university and he made an application to go to graduate school you know what they did they, 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 they try to get him into a mental health institution because he must be a bit crazy or lunatune to want to actually do that. You know? 